Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official SAT study guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you buy 2020 edition and not the older one. Today, we'll solve some problems, some gradient problems, beginning with page number 338. Page number 338. Let's turn to it. Make sure the book is in front of you. And if at the end of the video, you decide that this was helpful, that you learned something out of it, that you got something out of it, and if you decide that you would like to work with me, that you would like to hire me as a tutor to get you ready for the exam, I prepare students not only for the math part, but also for the reading, uh, rather writing part. Uh, reading part I'm not, I'm not very good at, but for, uh, I can help, but not much. Uh, but I can help you with the writing part, which deals mostly with the grammar, and I can help you with the vocab voca vocabulary. Work on the vocabulary on your own, as, you, as I always reminded you on the first and the second day. Let's get going. We are doing some gradient problems. We will begin question number 16. But before we start with question number 16, there was something I left out in a hurry. Yesterday, as we were doing our work, during the course of the work, we had to figure out this quantity, square of two and a half. And what I told you is that the square of two and a half is six and a quarter. And the reason that I explained to you is that we all know that 25 squared is 625. 625, if square of 25 is 625, and if you know that, then it makes sense to say that square of 2.5 must be 6.25. And then I left it at that. And then I left it at that. We never actually did it out. So I'm going to do it out to show you how to get 6 and a quarter out of it, this thing if you didn't know this part. If you did not know that the square of 25 is 625, or if you did not make the connection between the two, you can do it out. Here, right here. We have 2.5 times 2.5. I'm going to change this marker so that I don't keep picking it up. It's down. Let's begin. Okay, very quickly. Watch what happens. Very quickly, watch what happens. So, 2 times 2 is 4. Half of 2, 2 times half is 1. And similarly, half of 2 is 1 again. And half of half is a quarter. There you go. 4, 5, 6, 6 and a quarter. Nothing to it. Very simple, very straightforward. Now we can begin our work. Question number 11, the very first problem that we see, the gradient problem. Well, not 11 rather, I mean to say 16. 16, and these are known as gradient problems. You will hear me refer to this as gradients because you have to grade in your own answers. Number 16. I bet you that was that was uh, astounding to learn for you, wasn't it? Number 16 is where we are. Let's take a look at it. It says that we have a manufacturer and he's shipping some things. And the total cost of shipping, we are told, total cost of shipping is 5C plus 12F. And C represents the number of units that are shipped closer to closer locations. And F represents the number of number of units that are shipped to farther locations. Notice farther. A lot of times I hear people say uh, further. It's not further, it's farther. Further simply means additional. FAR. We are told that the total cost, total cost we are told, is 47,000. And the cost of the units that are shipped farther out, we are told that obviously we are going to ship 3,000 units. 
F represents the number of units that are shipped to the farther, farther location, and that's 3,000. Let's find out what, how many units were shipped. The question is how many units were shipped to closer location. Let's find out. So we have everything we need. We simply have to plug in numbers and find out. So total cost is 47,000. And the cost of shipping uh, the unit to that are closer to our location is apparently five dollars per unit, and we're shipping. Oh, that's the what we want to find out. And the cost of the unit that are shipped farther out, farther from the plant, is apparently twelve dollars per unit, and we're shipping three thousand units. So it's twelve times three thousand. Twelve times three is thirty-six. So it's thirty-six thousand. Let's subtract 36,000 from both sides. If we subtract 36,000 from both sides, this guy is going to go away. And that means that 5C, 5C equals 47,000 minus 36,000, which is 11,000. And if it makes your life easier, because soon we're going to have to divide by 5. You see, you have to think ahead of time. If, you, if it makes your life easier, Write this 11,000, not as 11,000, but write it down as 10,000 plus 1,000. And you will see that it will make your life easier. Now we have to solve for C, so let's divide the entire equation by 5. Let's divide the entire equation by 5 and we're done. So this 5 is going to go away and C is equal to 10,000 divided by 5 is 2,000. And 1,000 divided by 5 is 200. So the answer is 2,200. 2200 how many units were how many units were shipped to closer location the answer is 2200 if the total cost of shipping was 47000 and if 3000 units were shipped to the locations farther out that's all number 16 number 17 number 17 gives us 2x plus 1 we are told the absolute value is equal to 5 and we are told that so it will have two solutions because it has the absolute value it's going to have positive and negative and we are told that A and B are the two solutions are the two solutions and what we want to find out what we are being asked here is the absolute value of A minus B. I'm going to change the marker one more time because apparently I'm not too happy with this one either. It is just dying and it's very light and I don't like it. Okay, so let's begin, shall we? So because it has absolute sign, because it has absolute sign that tells us that Either 2x plus 1 is equal to positive 5 or 2x plus 1 is equal to negative 5. Because if you remove if you remove the absolute sign, what we end up is this. What we end up with here is this. 2x plus 1 is equal to positive or negative 5. And we have to contemplate both of those scenarios. So it could be 2x, it could be that 2x plus it could be that 2x plus 1 is equal to negative 5, or it could be that 2x is e plus 1 is equal to positive 5. Hence the two solutions. And the two solutions that we're going to get here, they're calling them A and B, and our job is to give them the absolute difference of the two solutions. I'm going to erase all. Well, let's not erase it, let's put it like this. Let's pick up the story here. So 2x is equal to bring, subtract, subtract 1 from both sides, bring 1 to the other side, it become negative 6, and that gives us x is equal to negative 3. So this is 1. And here, 2x is equal to when we bring the 1 to that side, it becomes 5 minus 1, which is 4, and now x is equal to positive 2. So the two solutions are negative 3 and 2. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter which solution you call A and which one you call B. It doesn't matter. It does not matter because they are asking for the absolute value. In either way, the answer is going to be the same. For example, let's do it on the top. For example, if we call negative 3 A, if we call negative 3 A, then it's going to be A minus B. B would be 2 in that case. Positive 2 that is. Oh, we're looking for not, we're not looking for A plus B, we're looking for A minus B. So 
So that is our, let's put it this way. This is our A. Our A is negative 3. Negative 3 minus B, which is positive 2. That makes it easier to see. So negative 3 and a negative 2 will give us negative 5 in the absolute sign. And the absolute value is 5. And like I said, it doesn't matter because since we are taking the absolute value, it doesn't matter which one we call A and which one we call B. Instead of calling negative 3A, if we had called negative 3B, if, if we had called negative 3B, here we would have had minus negative 3. And A would have been 2. In which case, we would have been looking for the absolute value of 2 minus a negative 3, which is same as absolute value of 5, which is again 5. So the answer to this problem is 5. It doesn't matter which way you go, but it has this inequality has two solutions obviously. The names of two solutions are A and B, and the question simply was what is the absolute difference between the two solutions? And the answer is the absolute difference between the two solutions is five. Number eighteen. In number 18, it says that we purchased, we purchased an antique, an antique, an antique item for $200. And we are told further that this item that we purchased, the antique item, we are further told that it appreciates in value every year, it appreciates in value every year by 10%. It appreciates in value 10% each year. We are further told that the value, value of the item at the end of two years, at the end of two years, is 200 times A. Now notice, 200 is what we paid for. 200 is exactly what we paid for the item. And the final value after two years of having owned it is 200 times some quantity. And our job is to find out what is that quantity. 200 times what? That's all it is. Let's, let's take a look at it, okay? Now for those of you who already know it, how to do it, uh, set, setting it up, it's compounding is what it is. And if you know it, it's actually very fast, very simple. I'm doing it for the benefit of those of you who might have a little bit trouble with it. So if you already know it, just be patient. So we're going to buy it. Let's buy it for... Let's buy it. Let's buy it for D dollars. Even though they said 200, we're going to first talk about D dollars and then we'll substitute 200 at the end. At the end of the first year, at the end of the first year, the value of this item would be the original D dollars that we paid for it plus 10% of D dollars. 10% of D dollars can be written as 0.1 times D. If you take out if you take out D common from here, it becomes 1.1. That's, that's going to be this value at the end of the first year. At the end of second year, at the end of second year, the value of this item is going to be 1.1. This is the value of the item at the end of the first year. At the end of second year, its value is going to be 1.1 raised to 2. At the end of the third year, the value of this item is going to be 1.1 raised to 3, and so on and so forth. At the end of n years of owning it, after having owned it for n years, it will, its final value is going to be D, the original amount that we paid for it, times 1.1 raised to n. Since we have owned it only for two years, we just have to raise it by two. And I hope at this and at this point, I hope that you know your squares. You must know there are some basic things that you have to know by heart if you have any hope at all, if you have any shot at all of getting a decent score. And one of the basic things that you must know by heart are your squares. 1 through 10, of course, but also maybe 11 through 15. At least at least 11 through 15. And if you know your squares, you will know that 11 times 11, let's do it out on the top here. You will know that 11 times 11 is 11 times 11 
I hope you will know, is 121. 121. And since we're not multiplying it by 11, we're multiplying by 1.1, it is 1.21. So the question was, what's the value of A? So we paid $200 originally times A. Question was, what's the value of A? The answer is the value of A is 1.21. This is what you want to grade in, 1.21. Let me quickly show you how to do, uh, how it comes out to be 111. So let's, it's very simple actually. 11 times 1 is 11. Carry 1. And 11 times 1 is 11 again. And plus 1 is going to give us 12. But here we don't have 11, we have 1.1. So that's what it is. If 1.1 times 1.1 is going to be 1.21. That's all. That was number 18. Let's look at the number 19. Number 19. The penultimate one. The penultimate one, the second to the last one. Number 19 says that 2x plus 3y we are told is equal to 1200. And then, you tell, then they go on to tell us that 3x plus 2y is equal to 1300. I don't know why this one is number 19. It's supposed to be a hard question. It's the second last question in this section. But it's actually very, very simple. Because what they're asking us is, what's the value of 5x plus 5y? Well, if you're looking for 5x plus 5y, all we have to do is add up the two equations. 2x plus 3x is 5x. And 3y plus 2y is 5y. And they're asking it what's the value of this guy, 5x plus 5y. Well, 5x plus 5y will simply be 1200 plus 1300. It's 2500. There's nothing to it. The answer is 2500. Let me quickly look up so I can tell you when we learned the word penultimate. If I can find it very quickly, if not, then no. Oh, there you go, day number 11. Again, if you're looking for this particular video, just type in Kashwani, SAD vocabulary words, day 11, and learn the word. That is the best thing that you can do to get, your get, to get a better score in the reading part. That is the best thing that you can do. Because reading is not something that you can improve over a matter of one or two months. Reading is something that one, a uh, good reading habit, a good reading skill, is something that one develops over many, many years of having read different things. So the question is then, what is it that you can do in the short term to get a better score? The answer is, in the short term, what you can do to get a better score in the reading part is to work on the vocabulary. Because this is where people make a lot of mistakes. Because they, don't, they read the thing and they don't understand the words. And they pick the sucker's answer. Don't do that. Don't be a sucker. Learn the words so that you can understand what is going on. Number 20, very last one. Number 20 says that u plus t, u plus t is 5, and we are told that u minus t is equal to 2. And the question simply is, what is the value of u minus t times u squared u squared minus t squared. Now what is going to go on here, what is going to go on in this problem is the exact same thing that we came across in problem number 6. On day number 1, when we did problem number 1 through 10, we went through what is known as difference of two squares. Difference of two squares. And you must be able to recognize how difference of two squares appears. If you take this quantity a plus b and multiply it by a minus b, and I know you know this already, but I'm just doing it just for just to make sure, you get a times a is a squared, a times negative b is going to give us negative ab, b times a is going to positive b times positive a is going to give you positive ab, and positive b times negative b is going to give us negative b squared. And what we find is that the middle term negative ab and positive ab drop out, and this part this re things reduces to a squared minus b squared a squared minus b squared and this this formula that you see there is known as difference of two squares because that's what it is it's the difference of two squares this quantity is being squared and this quantity being squared and we're looking at their difference and difference of two squared is simply the sum of the two quantities times their difference which is exactly what's going on here 
u squared minus t squared instead of a and b instead of a and b u squared minus t squared instead of instead of a squared minus b squared instead of instead of a we have u and instead of b we have t everything else the same so this thing that we see is simply u plus t times u minus t and if we knew that the question is very straightforward the question is very simple there is nothing to this nothing to this problem at all the only reason why it appears as number 20 as the hardest question in the section is because most people do not know this thing something simple as that and yet they don't know it if you knew this part the rest is very simple you'll see how easy it is this is u minus t and they tell you what the quantity are equal to u plus t they tell us is 5 u minus t they tell us u minus t is equal to 2 so this is u minus t that is 2 times u plus t which is 5 times u minus t again which is 2 there you go 5 times 2 is 10, 10 times 2 is 20. It is so simple that even I can do it. I'll see you tomorrow where we start, where we will start the next section, section number 4. Section number 4, the next section on page number four, 341, it's going to be an interesting one because that's the one where they allow calculators and I'll tell you at that point as to when it is wise to reach for the calculator and when it is not so wise. Okay. We'll meet again tomorrow. If you want to get hold of me, if you would like to hire me as a tutor, send me an email as I said before, keshfaniprep at icloud.com. Alright, bye now.